Hi everybody! Welcome to my watercolor notebook page. I'm Pam and today I'd like to share with you a favorite tip on how to save a bundle on watercolor paper. So when you buy watercolor paper you can buy it in a couple different ways. The first way is you can buy packs of uh, loose sheets like this. So this came just wrapped in cellophane and it, they're loose sheets and when you use those you need to prep them before you can paint by by taping them down on all sides on a board like this or gator board or something like that so that the watercolor paper doesn't buckle too much when you're trying to paint on it. So that's one way that you can um, handle watercolor paper. And another way that you can buy watercolor paper is in a block. And the blocks are glued usually on two sides. Sometimes you can find them glued on three sides. Um, one side is open so that when you finish painting on the block, you can take a, an X-Acto or any kind of a little paring knife and slice the paper off of the block. I love these because they're quick and easy and you don't lose part of your edge by having to, having to tape that edge down. See on this one you lose a half an inch on each side of your paper because you're taping off that margin. So you gain a little bit of space on your watercolor paper by doing it this way as well. When you buy a block of paper it's much more expensive than it is if you just buy the paper pads or the loose sheets. So um, you know if you've got it to spend, go ahead and have somebody else do the work for you, but um, I like to save a little bit of money here and there when I can. So today I'm going to teach you how to make your own watercolor paper blocks. So I'm going to switch over to my other camera so you can see my work surface and we'll get, we'll get started. Okay, so we'll only need a few simple supplies. Um, one is you'll need uh, some tacky glue, and this glue is by Aline's, and it's clear gel tacky glue that dries clear. You want to make sure that it's not going to dry a, uh, a funky color because um, sometimes it does get a little bit on the edge of your paper, and you don't want to be able to see that. So you need some tacky glue. You need something to spread the glue with. So I like this little, this is about a quarter of an inch flat brush and it's pretty stiff. So just use an old brush because uh, you won't be able to use this brush for painting afterwards. So just use an, use an old brush that you don't care too much about. You'll need at least 10 clothespins to hold your paper together. And you will need your watercolor paper. So this is about 25 sheets of watercolor paper that is already cut down to the size that I want and just if you are framing or uh, matting your pictures that you paint, if, you, if you're using an 8x10 mat it's going to hold a 5x7 and if you are doing a 5x7, it's going to hold a 3x5. So I always like to cut my paper a little bit larger than the opening of my mat. So make sure that you check out the size that you're going to need for your finished painting before you use your paper cutter and cut down your, your sheets. So this was a, a ready-made package and uh, it's 100% cotton paper from the B Paper Company, which I I like their watercolor paper and it's a six by nine stack. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that it's uh, stacked up properly and that my edges are even and flat and I'm just going to put a little clip on each side just to hold it for a second while I get my other materials prepared. And on, on this block, I like to glue down three of the four sides because even though you really only need to glue down two to, to help with the warping of the paper when it gets wet and you're painting on it, um, it also protects the sheets underneath of the piece on top that you're painting on. 
So I like to just give a little bit of extra insurance and go ahead and, and glue down three out of the four sides instead of just two. The fourth side you'll leave open so that you can slip your X-Acto or your paring knife in and slice off your painting after you're finished with it. And it's dried and, and, and ready to be um, ready to be taken off of the block. All right, so the first thing I'll do is choose the side that I'm going to glue and let's, let's do this top side. So I'm gonna move my pin to the opposite side so that the edge that I'm going to be gluing, which is this edge, is, is completely clear, but it's still being held down by those two clips on the end. Okay, then I'm gonna take my glue and I like to make sure that um, the glue is all settled near the, the top of the bottle so I don't get any air bubbles as I'm going along. And I'm going to start at one end and run a bead. I'd say this is going to be a medium sized bead. Try to get it as even as you can and stop about, stop pressing the glue out about an inch before the end. And that way you won't get glue running off the end of your paper. Okay, the next thing you want to do is take your brush and I like to just dab at the glue and try to even it out lightly all along that bead and that way if I have excess glue I can wipe it off on my paper towel as I go. The goal here is to make sure that the glue catches every page but you don't want to have excess glue because if, the more glue you have on the paper, the harder it's going to be to get it off at the end. So it's better to go thin. Then it's better to have too little than too much. If a little piece doesn't catch, that's fine. It's still going to give you enough. See, I've got too much glue, so I'm just going to swipe it off with my brush. There we go. Okay, so it's pretty even. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to get this pretty even. And I always leave the, um, I left the cardboard on my block because that's going to protect that last sheet of paper there. And sometimes I'll put a scrap piece of paper on the top just to protect my first piece of watercolor paper. Although I don't do that too much anymore because I've done this enough times that I'm pretty accurate with the glue. It, does, it takes a little bit of practice to get just the right amount of glue on there. Okay, so I usually like to have three clothespins on that wet side. All right, so we're gonna turn it over and do the other long side. So let's move our clips up to the corners. All right. Sorry for moving around so much. And if, for the sake of the video, I'm doing two sides, but what I normally do is I'll do a side and then let it dry. I'll just sit it, sit it off to the side somewhere and let it dry while I'm doing something else. And then when it's all dry, then I don't have to worry about, you know, accidentally getting my fingers in it while I'm trying to do the other side. For the sake of the video, I'm just doing them both at the same time. So we're kind of tapping to even this glue out, wiping off excess. Because you don't want glue running down onto the front of your pages. And you don't want it creeping in to the pages in the inside the uh, block either. It makes it hard to get the paper off and it also um, you know, when you go to paint on the paper, you don't want your edges to be messy. And really, this is it. Nice, and nice thin layer. Don't go crazy with the glue. 
All right, now I'm going to take my, I'm going to make sure I have three clothespins. I hold that and so I've got two sides of my paper block glued. And on this one, I'm going to experiment really and just do two sides on this block. Normally I would do three, but I'm going to just do two on this and see how it goes. I may be able to get away with doing just two. And you can do the same. See what works for you. If you tend to use a lot of water and a lot of paint, I would um, go for that third side. But if not, um, you may only need to do two sides of your, of your paper. So if you learn to do these paper blocks, it will save you, I promise, a bundle on your watercolor paper purchases. So I hope this has been helpful for you, and I'll see you in the next video.